hello guys welcome back to the channel it's been a minute i posted on this channel but again uh appreciate you guys for joining back to watch this one so uh the nigerian flamingos that's the under 17 national team uh actually started their world cup series in a flying start by beating new zealand four goals to one yesterday night I actually saw a bit of that game and uh, it was really impressive the way that they played how fluid our team was uh, the formation, the uh, the swift attacking uh, abilities and everything. I was just loving the way that they played. And uh, obviously the scoreline showed, you know, how how much of a quality that we have in our team. You know, uh, we actually uh, wrapped the game up in the first half, scoring three goals. You know, first goal actually coming in the second minutes from Moshud. 13th, in the 13th minute, we saw Adegoke, you know, scored the second goal, and then Abdul Wahab scored in 28 minutes, and then Afolabi scored in the 55th minute, and then New Zealand, New Zealand uh, put one consolation goal uh, in the 60th minute, courtesy of Saxon. But, uh, you know, I mean, all in all, it's good to actually start on a high note uh, in these kinds of uh, competition, and that leaves our girls at the helm of the group a with three points you know after you know playing their first game of the competition uh ecuador are currently playing right now with the host country dominican republic and uh, they are leading two goals to zero which puts, puts them in second position and then our next game is coming up on friday against this ecuador side who seems to be a strong side as well so we'll see how that one turns out uh but right now uh, but at this point, it's 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 good, obviously, for uh, Oluwo Kere, Coach Oluwo Kere, uh, and the girls, obviously. But you know, moving away from that one, and then about the Nigerian Super Eagles and the fact that we that we didn't play our game on Tuesday as we were supposed to, I'm sure you know it's no longer news right now. The match was obviously cancelled because of what the Libyan team uh, did against Nigeria Super Eagles. Uh, they decided to take a reprisal, a reprisal act or act of revenge on the Nigerian Super Eagles for delaying them three hours when they came to Nigeria to play at the Uyo Stadium last week. Uh, and then they overdid their own by allowing our players to stay at the airport without food, without water, no bed to sleep, no internet for more than uh, 13 to 15 hours, you know, after they arrived in Libya. Locked up in an airport, you know, uh, it was such a depressing sight to see uh, our players. Uh, they barely had roof over their heads, you know, uh, they, they were just like hostage, hostages there, you know, uh, who didn't have families, who didn't have loved ones, you know, it, it was just the way that it felt. And, uh, you know, at some point it felt like something that needed, uh, uh, you know, a, a swift action from the Nigerian government, the NFF and everybody, you know, at, at the top there to actually act to get these guys up. It felt like it was something else, obviously. And uh, within the team, the captain, William Jusekong, had a discussion with, you know, with his teammate and then they decided that, you know, they were not going to stick around and play the game. Uh, because it was it was impossible you know even if they were being extracted from that airport to travel to the city of the of, of to travel to the city where they are going to play the game was going to take another three to four hours and it was going to be by road and there is no assurance of proper security to guide these guys we know the libya situation it's a it's a war-torn country you know a country that is not exactly stable uh and, and of course anything could could have happened and uh the food is not something that the guys uh, obviously trusted as well you know you know people that left you at the airports for almost 24 hours there's no way uh, there's no way you're trusting the food or water that they are bringing to you it's impossible or the or the uh you know the, the security it's impossible so that kind of was way too much for the team and all that aside it was also impossible for the team to make that trip and be ready in time to play the game which was supposed to be due on tuesday uh so they decided that they were not going to play that 
they wanted to come back to Nigeria and NFF acted quickly to send a private jet to extract the guys back to Nigeria. And then while all these were happening, uh, the NFF actually, you know, were updating their uh, CAF. And in the end, CAF decided to, you know, step into the situation. And according to the reports, they've now fined uh, Libya $10 million, which for me, I think it's a fair amount. You know, it's something that they deserve that amount. They deserve to be fined that much uh, amount. Uh, but again, what I, don't, what I don't like or what I didn't like is the fact that CAF decided to postpone that game into 2025, somewhere around March, which is not very good for Nigerians by this. I thought that should have been a walkover for you know for that Libyan team that should have given the Nigerians by this all three points because the Libyan side deserved to lose that game. They deserve to lose all three points for acting the way that they did. You know, it was it was so so uh, unsportsman like but again, it is what it is. Uh, that's another extra baggage for Nigerians baggage going into next year. Of course, you know, next year is, uh, you know, purposefully for FIFA World Cup qualifiers. And now they have a match carried over into that time frame, which is obviously going to be very difficult for them to start, you know, trying to prepare for extra match when they are supposed to, like, focus on preparing for the world cup qualifiers which is something that they would need because we've not been doing really well in the world cup qualifying series but again it's what it is and uh for me i'm just so glad that the players are able to come back in one piece you know everyone's back and uh right now most of them are returned back to their club side and hoping to play again you know this weekend but that's what's currently happening right now uh again you know i hope that this is this you know is enough lesson to go a long way to prevent other countries from pulling up this kind of uh this kind of show you know next time it's not what we want to see in in, in african football of course you know it went viral a lot of internationals you know spoke spoke out against it the likes of adibayo uh Bame young and the likes everyone reacted in a way that you know uh was supportive to nigeria's